Okay, okay, okay. So my conscience was really bothering me. I've been promising this video for a long time and I needed to kick myself in the butt and get to it. This is about adjusting the stock carburetor on the Toyota 20R engine. Stock carburetor, not the Weber. Stock. Okay. This is really, really basic stuff, but there's a few little typical important Toyota tweaks that we have to get into. pointer here ready to go. This is your basic stock 20R carb. Okay. What's most important is going to be over here on the right. This is the passenger side view of the carburetor. Okay. Not driver side, passenger side. You have three adjustment screws here that you're going to be concerned with. Right in the center, above the vacuum ports is your idle mixture adjusting screw. Okay, it's on an upward angle. Over basically straight to the left. This is the regular idle speed adjusting screw. You can't see the line here, but there it is. And it's flat out. The face is parallel to the ground. Parallel to the ground? No. At a right angle to the ground. The head of the screw faces straight out. Okay. Your fast idle adjusting screw is down here and it's on a bit of a downward angle. Now, I have better pictures of this to show you. And here we go. See, there's your fast idle adjusting screw. It's pointed down. Here's the regular idle speed screw. Here is the idle mixture screw. Okay. You want to start cold. Cold start. Because you want to adjust the fast idles first. Now, this is a PDF copy of the shop manual, which I have. I'm putting it here, and you can pause at any point so you can have a better look. This covers 75 through 78 for sure. It should work fine for 79 and 80, 20 yards. Shouldn't be any difference. Okay. They recommend the fast idle speed be set at 2,400 RPM, which I find insanely fast. I don't like to put a motor under that kind of stress when it's cold. Why did they do this? Because it was the beginning of the emissions era, and they wanted the engine to warm up as fast as it can to get the operating temperature as fast as it can to get as efficient as it can. Therefore, less pollutants going out in the air. I've tried this. I can't stand it. it it's just a personal preference with me. I can't deal with it. 1600 to 1800 is plenty fast. It warms up fast enough for me. I keep in mind, I am in Florida. So even in the winter, it really doesn't get that cold down here. If you're in a more northern climate in the United States, Canada, you may want the faster one for faster warm up. It's up to you. It's your choice. I'm not making a recommendation either way. I'm just telling you what I do and what my preferences are. Right now, I've got mine set at about 1800, 1850. It seems plenty. After 60 seconds of warm up, I'm able to kick it down to a bit of a lower idle. It's still a fast idle. I'm able to drive on that with no problem. All good for me. But you want to do this first when it's cold. One pump of the pedal. Your choke plate should close in the top of the carburetor. And it should set this screw on the fast idle cam and get that adjusted. Once you get that adjusted, you need to let the engine fully warm up. Okay, Let's come back up here. Oh. Timing, idle speed, there we go. Colon temperature, thoroughly warmed. Look at your temperature gauge. Okay, I like to let the needle on mine come up to wherever it's gonna come up to. And I'll see it kind of hesitate and then drop back down a little bit. I'll know the thermostat is open and it's circulating coolant. I know it's fully warmed up. I know the water choke on the 20R carb, which is this booger back here. It's in the back of the carburetor towards the firewall. Coolant goes in. It heats a biometal spring, which slowly expands and opens the choke plate for you. Okay. 
on 81 and up 20 yards, they replace this with an electric one. Um, Weber carbs, it can, they can have a water choke or they can have electric, same way. Doesn't matter. You want it fully warmed up, full operating temperature. Choke valve fully open, all your accessories switched off, all your vacuum lines connected, okay? Transmission in neutral or park if you have an automatic, all right? I forgot to mention something and I apologize. Before you even start, cold start it to do your fast idle, you'll want to go to your idle mixture adjusting screw, okay? Flat blade screwdriver, take your time, go slow, be careful, use your head. You wanna turn this to the right slowly and count how many turns, okay? If it goes here to here, that's a half turn. This goes all the way around, that's a full turn. All right, turn it to the right until you see it. If you just start to feel some resistance of it wanting to stop, don't crank this down. Really important because this screw has a pointed tip on the end that goes in a little hole in the carburetor. If you crank it down, you'll deform that tip and you will never, ever be able to set the idle mixture correctly. Okay, so you turn it all the way to the right until it just wants to stop. Then you turn it back out one and a half to two turns. I prefer two. If you've got a brand new carb, one and a half is good. I prefer two just because it gives me a little wiggle room when I'm adjusting later. I'll explain it. Okay. You go out one, two full turns. That pulls that tip out and allows a certain amount of fuel to flow through that idle circuit. Okay. It won't hurt anything on the cold start, but this is only for the hot side when you get it all warmed up. All right, fully warmed up. Once it's fully warmed up, you need a tachometer, okay? I've got an old Sun Pro 2 that I hook up to the negative post on my ignition coil, and it's got a positive and negative, and I just connect it to the battery for power. If you've got one of those timing lights that has the tachometer in it, so much the better for you. This is for tachometer adjustment, not by ear. Okay, by ear you can do it, that's a whole other story. You want to see where your RPMs are. All right. This is not the same as adjusting for lean best idle. I want to make that very clear. That's not the way these things get adjusted. Not by the book. You can, but by the book, it works a lot better. Trust me, I've tried it both ways several times. You want to turn the idle mixture screw until you achieve 900 RPM. Okay? That usually involves turning it to the left, richening it up a little bit. Usually it comes out to be about two and a half. Your results may vary. You turn it to about 900 RPM. Once you get to 900, you go over to your idle speed screw. You turn that into the right and you start reducing the idle speed. Okay. Now, as you can see here, 900 is a, is a baseline. They modified it a little bit for later years. 900 is good. Trust me. It works. You turn that idle speed screw. Oh, I'm sorry. You turn it to the left. Lower the RPM. They say for 75, 76, they want 850. 77 miles, 78 miles the same. Manual transmission, 800 RPM. Automatic transmission, 850. Okay. That's it. That's all they suggest for tuning for idle. All right. Now, I mentioned lean best idle. You can do it. And again, if you don't have a tack, you may want to do it that way. If you've got a good feel for RPM, okay. It's better if you have a tack. You like to be right on. I have mine adjusted this way, and I have it right at about 800. And I've got a manual in my 78. Five speed works just fine on a flat surface. I can surface. I can kind of ride the clutch pedal out a little bit, 
get some engagement, and there's enough torque in the engine to get it moving without having to give it any gas. Lean best idle. Typical. Typical way to do this. Again, do that initial adjustment with the idle mixture adjusting screw. Get it fully warmed up. Set a decent idle, warm idle speed, okay? Use your ear, whatever you feel like is going to be about 800. Understand this isn't going to be accurate without attack, but, you know, get a good feel for it. Not too, not too fast, not too, not too slow. Go back to your idle mixture screw and start richening it up. Go turn it to the left. I suggest an eighth or a quarter turn at a time. That means here to here or here to here. Okay? No more than a quarter turn at a time. Turn it one, turn it eighth or a quarter, give it a few seconds. Try again, give it a few seconds. If the idle speed starts picking up, that's fine. You keep richening this up until you don't hear it pick up any more speed. Okay? Like, okay, well, it ended up here, and then I went another quarter, and it didn't pick up any. And went another quarter, and it still didn't pick up any. Okay, well, take it back to where it was. And then go back to your idle speed screw. Turn it to the left, and back that idle back down to the 800 or 850, whatever you think is good there. Give it a couple revs. Make sure you've got good snap, good throttle response. Make sure it just it revs up right away. There shouldn't be any, any lag in it at all. That's lean best idle to my understanding. If somebody else wants to come in and post comments and argue, I don't know what I'm talking about. Be my guest. I'll just delete you. I don't care. <laughs> That's my understanding. That's the way it's always worked for me. It's worked on sixes. It's worked on V8s. It's worked on fours. Didn't, didn't seem to matter. I do know that the lean best drop works better on performance engines when it comes to four cylinders. It works better on stock V8s because there's a lot more going on than just on a stock four. You can do this on the stock 420R or a 24R. Sure. If it, hey, you don't have attack, you don't have attack. I understand. We work with what we have. It's no problem. Again, just nice. Decent, idle, boom. That's all you're after. This adjustment, when done correctly, gives you the most possible power for throttle. It gives you pretty much the best fuel economy without sacrificing decent power. Can you adjust it down and run it a little bit leaner? Yeah, you can. I don't, I do not, I don't advise that. Give it the gas at once. And don't, don't think, you know, well... Well, it's good there. I'll just do an extra extra half to three quarter and that'll be good. Mm, you can, but I don't really advise it. With a well-adjusted carburetor, one that's in tune, one that's not wore out. Really important point. One that's not worn out. Yeah, you can give it another mm, quarter and be good. It's really not going to make that much difference. Because again, if you already got to this point and it's not pick up any more speed, you mean more really isn't going to matter much. With V8s, it can matter a bit. Four cylinder, I wouldn't bother with it. I don't I haven't done it. I've tried it both ways. It doesn't make any difference. It runs the same either way. And again, this is for stock 20R stock carburetor. Okay. So again, just so you can see it. There we go. There's your there's your three screws. Pointed downward, fast idle adjusting screw, pointed straight out. Regular idle adjusting screw, or at least some people call it curb idle. Pointing straight up, not straight up, up on an angle like this. Idle mixture screw. All right. The 20R is going to be a little different. It might have a plug over it. You have to break out to get to it, but another story. Anyway, it's really simple. I'm, I'm probably over explaining it as usual because, you know, I have a habit of doing that. But that is what the book says. Just at the 900, back it down to 800, you're good. Or 850, you got the auto trans. Either way. Why is it 50 RPM more for the auto? Uh, well, because the torque converter takes extra power. It acts like you're clutching an auto trans. So you need a little more engine speed to store some energy into that torque converter. In manuals, that's, that, that's all stored in your, your flywheel. 
that's the difference. So there you go. Start at 900, shoot for 800. You should be good to go. Of course, you can make fine adjustments later as per your taste or preferences. Whatever you want to do. Hey, it's your car, it's your truck. You do what you want. I'm just giving the information so that you can do this. And to fulfill my promise, here's the video on how to tune a 20 yard carburetor. Yay! <laughs> I appreciate you all hanging out for as long as it took me to get this done. I appreciate everybody that watches. I appreciate the subscribers. Love you all to death. Don't know what I'd do without you. You keep me going. I, he I hear from plenty of you about how my, my videos and my information has helped you. It makes me feel good. Thank you so much for that. But that's the whole point. I publish these to help people out with their own stuff and help them get it going and get them running. That's my only goal here. If it helps you out, then I've done my job and I'm happy. As usual, comments, questions, let me know. If I know, I'll let you know. I've got a lot of information on file here. I've got PDFs on engines. I've got all kinds of things truck information. I've got links all over the place, pictures, <laughs> esoteric stuff. Look at my other videos. Check out my other videos. If there's something there you don't see, something you don't understand, let me know. I'll do everything I can to help you out. No problem. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for putting up with my rambling. Been a rough weekend and <laughs> work on that truck. Ah, kept you long enough. Thanks again. We'll see you later. Bye.